Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Um, we have with us this evening uh, a guest. I'll let him introduce himself and where he can tell what he wants to about himself. And uh, this is a uh, basically a wolf-like creature, this upright bipedal, which most of us would call a dogman encounter. So, um, without, you know, any further information, let's just go to our guest here. Um, uh, buddy, if you want to introduce yourself, um, tell what you want to, uh, about, you know, your name and everything, and let's just, uh, get into your encounter. Yes, hello, my name's Joseph, uh, 43 years old, I reside down here in southwest Florida, um, originally born in, uh, Shelby, Michigan. Um, spent uh, 38 years out in Denver, Colorado before going to Michigan, back to Michigan to work for Michigan State University from 2010 to 2015 and currently reside here just off Siesta Key, Florida. All right. Um, now, you your encounters, did, did they happen in uh, Michigan? Uh, yes. Okay. And one down here in southwest Florida. Okay, so mo most of it was kind of in uh, Michigan where we typically hear like the Michigan dog man. Correct. Right, okay. So if you would, let's start with uh, your Michigan encounters and then we can go to the Florida encounters. Okay, well the first one was going to take place in December, roughly 2015. Uh, I was getting home from work. Uh, had quite a heavy snow phone on the way home. Usually takes me 15, 20 minutes to get home from work this night. Particular night, it took me about 35 to 40. Had to creep it. It was a very heavy, wet snow. Um, pretty much an unexpected storm swooped in. And right there along the west part of Michigan coast there, you get in that snow belt and it get a lot of lake effect snow. <clears throat> Anyhow, <clears throat> usually, uh, I'd wait till the morning to shovel, but this particular night is figured out. Get the driveway done that way. It's easier to get out in the morning. If I got to go somewhere, I'm not shoveling snow and before work and stuff like that. So I'm out shoveling and 25, 30 minutes, take a break shoveling, light up a cigarette. All of a sudden I hear this pretty big splash hit the creek. Well, I figured maybe I'd spook some deer. They like to stay right behind the, uh, pool barn there sometimes you'll get out there and make noise and they'll you'll jump them and they'll jump through the creek that's what it sounded like so i started to make my way out towards the county road down the driveway just to see if what was in the creek and and <clears throat> as i'm walking i hear another lunge out of the creek something lunging out of the creek and i get up near where they pen up <clears throat> there's a little corner lot of woods and they'll uh Sometimes if you jump the deer, they'll hang in there. So I was just out there and took a had a flashlight with me. So I looked in the woods there and <clears throat> didn't see a deer. What I happened to see was, uh, and this was, uh, this one was on all fours. This it was on, and it was a, it was a silverish gray color. Um, looked like a huge, huge gray wolf, which those aren't. Maybe in the UP you'd see one. Um, never seen a wolf in. All my times there as a grandkid, um, very um, 400 plus pounds easily, and I kind of froze. I'm kind of saying, "Well, what am I looking at? Is this real?" And all of a sudden, that thing, in two bounds, probably covered 50 to 60 feet across the road, and all I heard was twigs and stuff snapping. And I just kind of stood there in amazement and went back inside. And <clears throat> um, the person I was living with at the time said what's going on and i said you're not gonna believe this but i pretty sure i just saw uh the dog man thing they talk about here in michigan he was no 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 i was like yeah 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 and i mean i was pretty frightened at the time so i said you know what i was gonna shower and go to sleep so i slept on it and i happened to go out there the next day and kind of look for tracks <clears throat> well there's so, so much deer through there there was kind of like you know 
bigger imprints, but the, nothing that you could get a, a solid print of. So it was just kind of a kibosh there. So I kept stressing to the person I was living with. I was like, you know, it even like something was like changing around the house. So I kind of did some research, <clears throat> not only on the Michigan dog man stuff like that, but around the, where the place was built and the surrounding property. Well, it turns out pretty much a lot of that county, especially all the acreage around where I'm from is, which I guess could be said for a lot of America is every home there and stuff is built entirely on uh, Indian burial grounds. <clears throat> well, through my research, I found out that uh, the encounters, the encounters with people have with this thing happen to either come close to cemeteries or Indian burial grounds. So, as an avid hunter, fisherman and stuff, you know, I like to go out in the woods. And after that night, I was kind of skeptical, but I didn't want that to defeat me as a man in my pride. I'm not going, okay, maybe that's just a one-time thing. Well, fast forward to about four or five months later, <clears throat> um, taking a few days off work, my vacation, get some stuff done around the house, yard work. And this this time, this is around June, July. Um, just go out there, and I uh, what I do is I I would deer hunt up there. So I had a food plot, and I go out there and maintain that. So I'm on my way out there, and I uh, have my hip boots on, and I I just I like to walk up the creek, uh, just kind of check out everything, see what's happening, see if uh, there's no trespassers. People like to come in and out of there, especially during hunting season. And my grandparents passed. They thought they could just have free reign of it. It's pretty tough to control. And just kind of uh, do some trimming of uh, limbs and stuff along the creek, like when I trout fish and stuff, uh, just to make sure I have clear pass into certain trout holes and stuff. Um, <clears throat> now, kind of an outlier of the property. It sits on about 270 acres. Um, the house itself is on 30 with a uh, creek frontage. Um bordered by uh, numerous cornfields, a wild asparagus field out to the east. Um, and the creek, will, it bends up to the, uh, it'll, it'll go to the north and then it bends up to the east. Well, as I'm approaching that bend, I see this, this one's a, a dark colored. At first time, my first thoughts were, uh, I look like a black bear from the back. It's exactly what it looked like. And it's sitting, it was digging in, looked like it. From what I saw at this time, I'm probably about 125 yards from it. It doesn't have a clue. I'm even there. I mean, I'm walking up the creek pretty stealthily and a uh, light wind um, coming from uh, the north, heading south. And uh, I'm, just kind of sat there and kind of watched and I said, well, I've never seen a bear before. And I was just watching see. And all of a sudden, I don't know, it just, uh, it stopped what it was doing. Kind of raised on the two feet. And I'm still thinking at this point, it's a bear. And then I seen the two point ears on top. And I'm like, is that a damn German shepherd? And I, it's just one of the biggest things I've ever seen. And it, it kind of points its snout to the air. It has a snout, dog-like snout. This time I can see it and kind of looks like it's maybe sniffing the air. At that point, it then turns around. We lock eyes, stops what it was doing, and literally in one bound, and mind you, from where this thing was and doing what it was to the land it had to get to is about 45 to 50 feet. In one simple bound, this thing flies out of the water at about, I don't know, 20 feet off the ground, hits the land from 45 to 50 feet away, and takes off running due east. And again, I hear the snapping of twigs, this and that. And at this time, I'm carrying a single shot 410. I usually carry a sidearm when I'm out in the woods in case, you know, you got coyotes, stuff like that, just in case I uh, eradicate them. Um, uh, judging by the size, this, my range from it, probably 100 to 125 yards, it, Again, seven plus feet tall, um, massive, uh, massive shoulders, massive legs. The uh, I'll never forget the bound it took. It was just like one swift movement, um, almost graceful in a way, not trying to stir up or make 
light of the situation, but I basically stood there in amazement and like, uh, what is, what is this? You know, what, why do I keep running into this thing again? I, uh, get up on land and kind of stop and wait and just still hear after the smashing of twigs and stuff, you don't hear nothing. And now, um, I get home. I, I pretty much after that, I was like, you know what? I, maybe this isn't a good idea. I'm going to head back to the house. And then again, I get home and, uh, my father's there and stay with him. He wasn't doing good health wise. Uh, had staying with him on the family property there and I would <clears throat> travel to work. Anyhow, I again, explained to him, I'm like, you know, if you got a minute, I'd like to talk to you and I don't want you to think I'm insane. I explained to him that what I saw and he goes, I've been on this property for 50 plus years and never, ever, ever seen anything like that. He goes, are you sure? I said, I know what I saw, Dad. I mean, I'm not, I mean, this is the second time in five, six months I've seen this. At that point, I'm kind of, you know, you know, we'd have fires down by the creek, listen to music, you know, relax at night, you know, have a couple of beers. <clears throat> you know, just got to, you know, that point to where, you know, every time I would step foot in those woods, it was hesitant. Do I even want to go in there because I don't know what to expect? Well, uh, overcoming my fears and talking with people and maybe thinking, you know, oh, it's just a figment of my imagination, knowing it's not. <laughs> Um, knowing what I've seen, and this is the second time, like I said, the first one was on all fours. I never saw a bipedal. This one I did see bipedal. The first one was gray and whitish in color. This one was jet black in color. And both times, the uh, there was a smell, um, pungent dog, maybe like a rotting gut pile, but a very, very foul smell that lingered, and it would almost proceed into our introduce the encounter after that smell but actually i had seen the second one so that it, it i don't know what it was doing i had actually gone up to investigate that bank thinking it had cashed some food or something um so there was actually it was i couldn't believe it there was like nothing was there i don't know what it, it would come back and cover its tracks um anyhow um this this one, um, about two months later, I was just uh, out behind the pool barn, and I happened to see these, uh, I don't know, it's like something uh, something that made, like a like a shelter. And uh, one was like, probably stood about five foot, but it was the way the twigs and stuff were made out of, uh, I don't know, it had used twigs, whatever it was, had used twigs and kind of used it couple of poplars and birch trees and to where if it stood in there it was camouflage except for like it could look out and if it saw some prey or something maybe leap out and grab it that was the first one then i'd come around and there was a little bowl down by the creek was really good for deer and there was like this uh hard to explain but the only way i know how to really explain it is like a a woven nest into the ground where something of a pretty good size could lay and have shelter from the weather the way it was um, built. I had my old iPhone 5, and I really wish I would have downloaded some of those pictures and printed them off, and then I uh, that iPhone 5 fried on me, and I lost everything, <clears throat> SIM card. Um, anyhow, so the third one in Michigan is going <clears> to, <throat> that was the second encounter with this in Michigan. <clears throat> Now, it's coming up on deer season. Uh, I usually get out there about a month before deer season, get my area all lined up where I'm going to hunt. In this particular year, I was going to hunt <clears throat> where the creek bends up <clears throat> towards the east, toward uh, Williams Road, it's called. It's a county country road. If you're sitting at the kitchen table, the asparagus, you look right out through the cornfield and then the asparagus field. Williams Road is about a mile due east of the house. <clears throat> So I was going to set up right in there. There's some hardwoods that come down with the acorn grows in the creek, and I done my studying and kind of set up trail cram trail cameras. And there was a lot of uh, deer activity. Um, and all my checking of trail cameras, never once did I uh, happen to catch this creature on it. I did catch a lot of coyotes, um, a couple mountain lions. 
anyhow, <clears throat> so date's going to be right about a week before Halloween in 2016. Heading out there to uh, set up my deer, area, set up my blind, and then I usually let it sit for a month, let the animals and critters around there get used to it so they're not seeing something that's out of the ordinary. Um, so on my way out there, it's, it's actually a very nice day, mid-60s, uh, light wind, um, sunny. On my way out there, you know, birds chirping, uh, wildlife running everywhere. Usually, you know, the country out there is it's pretty nice and quiet, good people. Um, so <clears throat> I'm heading out there, and like I said, the birds are chirping, every, all the wildlife's good. And I get out there, and about 30 minutes in my clear and brush, you know, where I'm a semi blind, I've just got my blind finished setting up. And as I'm doing this, I've noticed, like, slowly uh, the woods have become, you know, quiet, more quiet almost, and then it's just like dead quiet. And then it's like, hmm, that's interesting. I'm kind of looking around. There were crows flying all around, checking me out, seeing what I was doing. There there wasn't nothing to be seen. And then that smell I was describing earlier started lingering. That wet dog or that rotting gut pile, just a a stench. I mean, that's all I'll call it. It was just pretty foul. And then I'm just kind of like inside of me and my little voice inside me is like, oh, not again. And kind of, you know, casually going about my business and just kind of slowly wrapping stuff up because I, I'm just, something's not feeling right. Something, I'm, I almost feel like I got the feeling like something's watching or stalking me. So I gather up, you know, my uh, pruners and all that, and put them in my uh, backpack and I load up and I'm on my way out. Well, I'm heading north towards the cornfield to come on about this point, I'm about 200 yards into the woods, and so I'm heading out of the woods due due north, right to the cornfield, and I hit the cornfield, and I, there's a little walkway along the cornfield that go right down to the house. Well, about 100 yards from the uh, wood line to get out to the cornfield, I something catches my eye, and it's moving pretty quick from the east to the west, and I hmm, said, hmm, what was that? And I kind of froze for a second, and Waited, see if anything peeked out. Nope. I said, okay, I'll carry on. Not really. I didn't, like I said, it was just a glimpse and, uh, whatever it was, was moving pretty quickly. Um, almost actually reminding me of my times in Colorado of Mount Lion. The way it was moving just very, it was very slick in its movement. So I get about 50 yards from the wood line and all of a sudden it's, uh, walking and hear this snap almost like a twig, so I think it's a deer, and I look immediately to my left, which would be west, and uh, I hear this very low, almost guttural growl, like, uh, I don't know if I want to say threatening, but something let me know that I'm closer. So I'm kind of looking, and I can't see anything. These are pretty thick woods, mind you, and there's still some foliage because it's not quite full winter yet late October and the leather leaves are gone but there are still some trees that um, haven't shed all their leaves so still nothing yet and so as I get out of the wood line I get to the cornfield um, start heading west towards the house and it's almost like as I'm walking, I can hear something almost pacing my steps, like walking right with me. And I'm just, I'm starting to get this uneasy feeling like, you know, and I, something is telling me to take off and run, but something is telling me don't take off and run because if something, if it's a mountain lion or it's something you don't do. And as I've been in the woods and hunting a lot of my life, and that's just something I know mistakes are made with people with that. They get spooked. And I, I just kept walking at my casual pace and, um, Still haven't seen anything. I'm looking. Um, again, that low gut roll growl. There's a little cutout we made, and we put a couple of salt blocks for the deer. The turkeys will come out and check it out, the salt blocks. And there's that little opening there, and there's a little drainage that when it rains, it will drain right into the creek, more of a feeder stream. When it rains, it becomes a feeder stream, goes all the way through the woods. Um, that's why it's a very good deer hunting property. Anyhow, 
that little guttural girl comes from in there. It sounds like it's about 20 yards in there. And I'm like, what is that? I've never heard. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's just like a very low guttural growl, like spooky. And I get up to the house. We we had pets. We had a couple of, I guess you call them mutt dogs, but they were nice. One was like a little dash hound, and the other one was a Newfoundland, Anchors, who has since passed, bless his heart. Um. And I get up to the house and come in, and Hankers is going absolutely berserk. I mean, he's wanting outside. I'm like, no, 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 not, you know, like he's he's wanting to go outside, and he keeps, like, going crazy. I get him inside, Hankers, calm down, and he, about 10 seconds, and I need to light up again. And then, so, okay, maybe I go back to him. So I went out with him. I actually loaded the 30 odd six just in case and uh, get outside, and, Hankers is just looking at the wood line barking, going crazy. And I'm like, what is he, you know? And he's barking. He gets out. There's a little knoll out there that where we do our target shooting out to the cornfield. We'll set targets. And he gets out there, and he's, like, getting in. Like, I've never seen Hankers. He's he's a lover dog. And, and he's starting to, like, get aggressive. Like, something's out there that I can't see or he senses that I can't. I mean, I have a sense of what, you know, just by what that smell and so I'm calling Hankers he's and I had to go up there and pry him back from the grassy knoll well I look out there towards the salt block and <clears throat> where you look east when you look into those woods it gets very very dark from the shade like it, it just it's it's almost eerie looking in itself so I'm looking and here's this <clears throat> creature Right there in between two trees, he's, again, seven, seven and a half feet tall, huge, takes up every bit of room, and he's looking right at me and right at the house and just sitting there and looking. Well, I have my binoculars on me, and I look, and this thing has a wolf face to a T. I mean, almost looked like a huge German Shepherd standing on its hind legs, but seven feet tall and about. 480, 500 pounds, easy. <clears throat> it look, it's, takes place for about five minutes, her eyes are locked. Mm. And I'm froze. Hankers is still going crazy. So I grab Hankers and <clears throat> get him back to the house. And I get Hankers in the house, <clears throat> get right on the slider door. <clears throat> Hankers going crazy still. And after I get in the slider, he completely stops hankers completely stops his barking all that good stuff all what he was doing i turn around look with binoculars that thing's gone that was out there between those trees and <clears throat> so my aunt <clears throat> denise comes she goes what what's all the commotion i said well there's something out there <clears throat> and she goes well what and i said um well it's a uh, very it's a creature and she goes what do you mean a creature i said it i said Antonis, you're gonna think i'm insane when i tell you this but until you've seen this thing or come across it you'll understand i said there is something in those woods it, i've seen it three times now two times bipedally and it looks like a big wolf she goes oh geez she's no there's nothing like that. I'm like, I'm telling you, that's what Hank was barking. Now he's not barking because it was out there by the salt block. And he said, now it's not. And she walks her dogs out there and her son's and Evan Hunter comes out there. And, you know, it's like, she's like, well, take me to where it was. I'm not going back out there. I said, I, I said, I don't recommend you to either. I said, there's something. I said, have you ever done research on this place, Denise? She goes, no. I said, you know, you know, the history and the artifacts of the burial grounds around this place of the, you know, it's Montague, Michigan, is where it was. You can do your research on it, Brent and whoever guessed, and it'll show you the history of that town, Montague, and the the battles and the wars that were raged between Indian tribes there and the burial grounds there. Anyhow, so <clears throat> kind of sit around, talk that night with my dad, and tell him, hey, you're not going to believe me. And he goes, you know, he goes, are you sure? I said, listen, Dad, I'm 110% positive what I've seen. You know, I said, I, I'm not, I'm not making this. I said, you, I said, if, it ha I said, if you ever happen to 
have an encounter like I had with it. I said, you'll understand. Well, about two weeks later, <clears throat> my Aunt Denise, she drove a truck. She'd go up through Wisconsin, and out, her final destination was Omaha, Nebraska, and then back. <clears throat> well, she'd get, she'd get home roughly anywhere between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., depending on weather. Well, this particular week, she got home, I don't know, one one forty five, two a.m. We were all sleeping. Well, I saw her the next afternoon. And she goes, hey, do you have a minute? And I was like, well, yeah, I was going to head into town, but what's up? And she goes, that thing you were talking about. She goes, what would it look like? I said, it looks like a tall, big wolf, Denise. Her, her nickname, we call her Toots, Aunt Toots. Anyhow, she she proceeds to tell me that when she got home that prior morning, when she was unloading her car, that she had heard a type of howl that she had never heard before. And I said, well, do you think I'm crazy now? And she goes, no. She goes, I, do you know where... I said, I'm not going to go looking for the thing. I said, I just know it's out there. And I said, if you're walking your dogs, I suggest you either. Can. I don't know what to tell you. That's, I mean, I, I said, there's something out there. Um, I don't. And she goes, well, maybe we should. Uh, cops ain't going to do nothing. Tits are going to tell you. They're look at you like you're batshit crazy. Excuse my language. <clears throat> I said, I'm just telling you, be careful. There's something out there. And if do not, if hankers or any animals go crazy, do not let them in the woods because... If you've seen the size of this thing, at this time, you can see a little fear enter her. Um, fear in me, absolutely, but my pride over, always overtook me because I, I just didn't want to be defeated by it. I don't know if, what it was. Um, <clears throat> so that was uh, there. And then, um, so I end up moving here to just south of Tampa, Florida, Siesta Key. I'm right off Siesta Key, Florida. Nice little tourist trap. Well, within my first week or two here, I get a phone call from a neighbor across the street, um, retired pipe fitter, Vietnam veteran. Um, he's lived up there his entire life, has, lives right across the street, has, and a family of mine have been friends for as long as I can remember. Anyhow, he, he was having a problem with uh, something getting into his uh, chicken coops, and he's missing farm cats, and um, ended up. His beagle came up missing. Um, gave me a call and uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, "You're not in Michigan, are you?" Uh, no, no. I said, "No, Jerry. I'm in uh, moved to Florida." I said, "Oh, well." Him and his wife Sue were woken up <clears throat> the night, the day he called me. The night before, him and his wife Sue were woken up. And they have a nice little, I don't know, it's a two, I'd say a two-story home, but it's built uh, the way it's built it's to look <clears throat> to have to tap or see in their bedroom window you'd have to be eight and a half nine feet off the ground well jerry happened proceeds to tell me that him and his wife sue were awoken <clears throat> at about 2 45 a.m the prior morning by a tapping on their bedroom window thinking i didn't know and think he just got up and as he gets to the window he looks out <clears throat> and there's there's the tapping's <clears throat> no longer happening, but he looks down and there's a half a deer carcass, just half of it. And he's like, well, I just didn't know if one got hit and you drank. I said, no, Jerry, I've been in Florida for a week, my man. He goes, wow, that's weird. And we, we, I said, we check it out. Is there anything footprints around it? And he said, yeah. And they, <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> excuse me. They, uh, said they look like they're really big paws they're almost like dog or like a coyote or wolf i said well jerry i saw this thing up there and part of the reason i moved was to get away from that i told my dad nah, i'm out of here i'm not I'm, that thing that thing won and i just <clears throat> so he proceeds that he goes out there and takes pictures and he calls the uh division of wildlife the dnr in michigan well, a couple of officers show up out there and he says, Hey, you know, I got this half a deer carcass here. I got, and they played it off. It was like, Oh, it's, it's a bear. It's a mountain lion. Um, and he said, and he had 
mentioned that he had brought up that, you know, I had a neighbor left here and he said he, he'd seen this bipedal wolf thing. Oh, no, no, no. That's, they're, they're not, that's not, that's a bear mountain lion that did this, sir. And wouldn't even file a report or nothing. They just basically kind of looked at him when he said that about the bipedal creature, like he was nuts. So he told me that and he goes, well, he goes, uh, the way that <clears throat> deer was laying, he goes, it was just like it was ripped right in half. This, he goes, I don't know where the other half was. He goes, as I was looking down at that deer carcass, the motion lights out by the chicken coop popped. He goes, I couldn't see anything walking, but he said he walked back there and there were tracks going in the woods. He said they were huge. He said they, they didn't know what to think. And you know, he's got grandkids and stuff come out there in the summer, run around his property. And he's just, he's really, you know, he's, when I mentioned that to him, he, and he's like, you crazy? I said, no, I pulled up the research on the Michigan dog, man. I said, here, read this on my phone. And he goes, I'll be damned. You know, and he goes, it's, I don't get it. <clears throat> and uh, so then he, pre <clears throat> as we're talking, she's to tell me that that summer I left in December of 16, got down here to Florida in December of 16. So I left December 17th of 2016. I re remember the date specifically. And he proceeded to tell me that that summer of 16, that he was out there working in his property back by the creek with his tractor, that when he was going back, there's a little place along his area that he made for the uh, grandkids. It's like a little beach. He said he's come up there with a load of brush out of there with a tractor. And he said he happened to see this, I don't know, he said he, he, I don't know if it was a little one or what, but he said it was about four feet tall. And he said the damn thing was running on its two back feet and it ran up the, ran up the hill to the north, Joe. And I said, well, what'd it look like? He goes, it looked like a little miniature German shepherd. I said, you got to, no way, Jerry. I said, yeah. So that's, I, the thing I saw was way bigger than that. <clears throat> but he, and I don't know if it was a pup or what, but he said this thing was running in the way it was running. He said it was moving. And so he pretty much didn't let the kids go down there by the beach because he didn't know what it was. Again, he calls not only the county sheriff, but the DNR. And again, that's, oh, that a coyote. He goes, listen, a coyote doesn't run on his back legs, man. They're like, well, we'll, you know, and so the DNR went out there and set trail cams. Nothing was ever come of it. And uh, like I said, they pretty much labeled him a nut. And he said, no, I know what I saw. And the damn thing was running on its two hind legs. And I said, well, Jerry, the one I saw was huge. And uh, he, uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, I believe it. He goes, there's been some... Uh, strange things happening. He goes, uh, there's been howlings at night. There's been again, that weird howling, uh, says it woke him up one morning at about three, three AM. And he said it wasn't a pack. He said it was one howl that he said, just the way it sounded was very eerie is what he put it. So late deer season, my uh, father, he's getting up there in age, but he, he was bound and determined to go out there and get him one last year. <clears throat> and this late deer season, late doe season runs out there, uh, late December. So I was down here in Florida. Well, I'm sitting around. I get home from work down here in Florida. And phone rings. It's the old man figure. He's calling, hey, dropped a deer. Yeah. And what's up, Pops? He goes, hey, that thing you saw, what it, what it look like? said it looked like a walking wolf oh well he proceeded to tell me as he was sitting in his blind he was getting out of his tree stand actually and uh, he said you know i was leaving those woods he goes i feel like something was following me and watching me i said well did you see anything he said no he goes i just had that feeling that i was being watched and something was following me i said well was there a smell he goes yes and it smelled like rotten guts and i said well that thing I saw and three times up there, that's the smell. I said, were the woods quiet? He goes, I didn't see a damn deer. I didn't see a damn animal out there. And that's the first time in years I've never, he said, you didn't even see ducks. Usually ducks will fly in the creek. You sit in your tree standing. They don't even know you're there. He said, you didn't even see a squirrel. 
which is very rare. And you didn't see one little bird. There's usually little songbirds, wrens, cardinals, fly through there. He said, I didn't see nothing. And they sat out there for four hours. He said, I didn't hear, no- hear nothing, see nothing. And the woods were complete. He said, what do you call it? He said, the woods were dead. And I said, well, do you think I'm crazy now? And he goes, no. And to this day, he's still kicking pulled out of his funk and uh, he won't go in the woods he's definitely afraid to go out there he's he, he i could hear it in his voice he he said he goes something was following me and i said well he goes well i said well <laughs> you're alive i mean he made it home he goes no he, he was spooked something he just said he had the feeling that something was watching him and i was like well it very well could have been that thing so he kind of mellows out. He said he was going to set trail cameras up. Um, I talked to him here and there. Uh, nothing out of ordinary. He did. Uh, he was up near the asparagus field picking asparagus, and he happened to come across. Um, There's like an old fence post, fence row, a hedgerow actually that pheasants will hang out in there and runs right down the border of the asparagus field. And he said on it's like those fence posts. He said on six of the fence posts was cat cat head stuck right through the fence post. But they had been there so long it was just a skull. I said, wow, that's interesting. I said, well, what would you do with them? He said, I, I took them. I said, you what? He goes, yeah, I grabbed them. I'm going to put them at the place. I was like, I don't know if that was a good idea. He goes, why? I was like, well, did you ever think maybe they were put there for something? There's something, I don't know. He goes, ah, hogwash or malarkey. That was his saying, malarkey. (laughs) So he had him sitting out on his ledge out by his, uh, he sleeps downstairs. And uh, he had him right there on his ledge. He had bleached him and they were drying well. He woke up the next day and every one of those skulls was gone. So he's out there about three weeks later picking asparagus again and damned if those skulls weren't right back where they he had found them. I don't know what you call that coincidence. Um, but uh, like I said, he, he don't go in the woods. He walks right through the mill. He cut a, there's a path that goes, it's almost like right in half right down the cornfield. So he walks through there, which I don't even know if I would do to get us. He picks a wild asparagus, it's a wild asparagus field back there and it grows on the property. So, anyhow, that was theirs up there. Now, down here in southwest Florida, I got down here and things were going, you know, nice and calm. Been here going on two years. Be three years this December. Um, About, probably, let's see here, let's say, be May of 2017. <clears throat> where I was living down here in Florida is close to a rural community. There's a dump out Laurel Road. It's called Laurel Road, L-A-U-R-E-L. Um, gets pretty rural out there. <clears throat> well, me and a buddy were out there, and uh, we just go out there and did a lot of fishing. There's some irrigation ditches. You catch some really, really big bass. Well, it's getting towards nightfall and stuff, and we had these little, well, we'd communicate through cell phone, text and stuff. We'd, you know, fish a quarter mile apart. And all of a sudden, I get this text from my buddy, <clears throat> Curtis. He says, hey, man, you got to get over here. He goes, you ain't going to believe. I, I, I think I just seen a big black puma, and it was on its hind legs. I said, a puma? No, you mean a panther? He goes, yeah. He goes, you got to get over. I said, well, where are you? I'm right up here where the irrigation turns toward the dump. And right, it's probably about <clears throat> 35 minutes from being complete darkness. All right. So I hop in the truck and fly up to him. And he's, <laughs> he's standing there frozen and he doesn't know what. And he goes, where was it? And he goes, it was right over there. So we're sitting there. And he walks me up to where it was, and there's some, you know, where it ran through was, 
like a swampy, so there's no firm print, but you could see something big had been there. And I asked him, I said, well, what did it look like? He said it would look, he, he goes, I, I, I swear it was a puma. He goes, it was all black and had yellow amber eyes. He goes, it looked right at me. He goes, it was 50 feet from me, Joe. He said it, it, he said he was sitting there fishing. He'd hooked the fish, the commotion of the fish, this thing. There was like, hard to explain, um, like a pasture land, but it was like grassed over. He said this thing just popped up as he's reeling on this fish and it like it had woken up from a nap or something, got up, looked right at him. He's releasing the fish. And then he said, it just took off into the little wood line um, down here. I said, so we, I kind of said, well, you know where it got up? We went over there and looked and there's bones or uh, scat. Um, like it had been, whatever it was had been, whether it was nesting or it lay in there. It was bones from animals, looked like rabbits, um, armadillo, um, stuff like that. Um, fast forward here to about uh, two months ago, me and the same guy, Curtis, were out fishing. This time uh, we went at night, we went about eight thirty, nine o'clock, um, catching fish. Uh, kind of, we're out in the same place out by that dump. <clears throat> um, so this time we're fishing together and all of a sudden you hear this, uh, like a big snap. What was that? And we had those little headlights, you know, on our hats and we look over, we don't see anything. Well, we said, okay, and go back to the truck and, uh, have a cigarette, you know, gather our wits, see what we're going to do next, see if we're going to, there's a good little place to fish about two miles down the road. We're sitting there smoking, and all of a sudden, you could hear, like, something got in the, like, was crossing the irrigation ditch. Well, we didn't figure what it was. We kind of, and he had one of them big old shining lights. He was a country boy in Palmetto out here. And I put that thing right in the irrigation ditch, and boom, this thing, jet black, was bipedal, looked like a standing German Shepherd, seven feet tall, 500 pounds, it's probably no more than 60 feet from us, and it's, I mean, the irrigation ditch is right there, our truck's right there, and we're both on the driver's side, we're leaning against the bed, looking over it, and I'm looking at this thing. Do you see that? And the thing, I mean, it's just looking right at both of us, and we're looking at it. <clears throat> so we're very careful with our movements. I was like, dude, do not do anything drastic right now. I said, I, I come from Michigan. I, just, I know what this is. It's, I mean, it looked just like, and the smell was, I mean, almost I wanted to throw up. That's how bad it was. This thing is just standing. It's completely frozen. He's got the light right on it. And um, amber yellow eyes to a T. Um, the, the hair is just mad. It's just a, it's just a mess. I mean, it's, it's a rough looking creature, whatever it is. It's, it's um, the legs on this thing. Are, I don't even know how to explain it. Just, it, it's something out of like a book. It's, it's, it's it just, he's like, well, let's jump in, take off. And, once you're inside that, this thing takes off. I mean, it bounds out of that. It bounds out of the light. And we, he kind of tries to follow it, and all we could see was the back of it. And it's running due west because we were right there. It's running right almost down the damn county road. It jumped out and hit the road, and it's run. And he's watching with the light, and then it darts right into the woods. Well, we sit there, and... <clears throat> He's like, I can't believe what I just saw. I said, well, what we just saw, I don't, it's nothing to play with. I said, I've never had like, in all my encounters, it's never turned aggressive, but I don't think if maybe it was, I don't know if it, I don't know what it was, but the thing, it, this one looked like it was almost ready to attack. Like it was ready to, like it was checking us out whether we were 
pray or what, but then that light, I don't know if that light had to agitate so bad. So <clears throat> we're packing up our gear and all of a sudden we see a bunch of squad car lights about, I don't know, two and a half, three miles down the road. Well, we're coming down and there are four, six, four fish and wildlife vehicles from Florida and three county sheriff cars. And we're coming through. I think we're one of two cars on the road and we're coming through and happen. I'm on the passenger side and I see a deputy. I was like, uh, what's going on deputy? Oh, nothing. <clears throat> and over, I don't know, about 20 yards in, in the light in front of one of the patrol cars is a, uh, it's a creature. It's laying on the ground. It's not moving. It's, I'm like, that. And my buddy Curtis goes, that's what I was like, shh. And it's laying in front of the squad car. I was like, well, what is that over there? He goes, oh, it, it's a black bear. I said, a black bear? I said, they have those down here? He goes, yeah, we got we to gotta move you guys through. I said, okay. I said, but he wouldn't even let me get a word job. What we saw in front of that patrol car was what we saw up the road. And it was laying in front of the patrol car, not moving at all. There was an ambulance that was coming to the scene. And it went back by the patrol car and parked by the patrol car. And they rushed us out of there, the wildlife agents and the police. And we tried to do our research on it, um, have found nothing even on the report of them showing up to that Um we knew the time, we knew the place, and something with that many um, cars or deputies deployed, I would figure something would be in a report, nothing, not one iota, nothing. And the way they were, they, and I said, that that doesn't look like a blackberry. He goes, you boys need to go. And I said that, he goes, you boys need to go. I know what that was. That was the thing we saw in the irrigation ditch. Now, I don't know if it was dead, if they tranquilized or whatever, but that's what was laying in front of the patrol car, and they brought in an ambulance. And what are they going to put in the ambulance? What, what was the ambulance there for? Um, that uh, pretty much um, sums up my encounters. Like I said, I did the research. You, there are... Uh, some things you can go into. A uh, Sarasota woman was feeding either a dog man or Bigfoot down here in Sarasota. The Sarasota County Sheriff actually has that up on, I think it's YouTube. I don't know if they took it down, but there was video of, and it was more of like a trail cam pictures or when she would throw food out and it would come up and it would, uh, it would, uh, there were certain postures it was caught in. One was, you know, grabbing the food. The other was coming out of the wood line. Um, they were there, whether it, that's since been removed by the county sheriff department, I don't know. But I know that night that, like I said, whether they tranquilized this thing or they somehow managed to shoot and kill it, which I don't know possible from a creature like that. I've heard stories of people trying to do that, and it didn't work out so well for them. Um, but that was, and my buddy Curtis, to this day says, I swear, I, I know it. it was laying right in front of the patrol car and we were trying to tie him. That's what we saw. And he's like, you boys need to go. Something about if we didn't leave that area, we were going to be apprehended for obstruction of justice or something. So whatever happened to it after that, we don't know. Like I said, there was no report. I could not find a single report. I knew the time. I knew the place. And there was four fish and wildlife vehicles from the state of Florida and three Sarasota County Sheriff vehicles there. And not one report on that. I find that very interesting. Um, I'm a believer in these creatures. I've seen them. Now, whether the government goes along their line to cover stuff up like that, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Um, but they are out there. Um, like I said, I thought I left Michigan, wouldn't have to ever worry about that again, but um, here we are again, and I'm still seeing the things. I mean, I still have every now and then nightmares about my encounters in Michigan. And I always wake up right as the dog man is lunging towards me. I wake up, and 
It's just, I don't know. It's until you actually either come face to face with one or see one, you just should be, I think people should be very careful in how they judge people or respond to people that have seen them because it, when it does happen to you, if it does, you can kind of relate to what people go through when they do come across these creatures because it is not pleasant. I do not recommend it for anyone. And if you do, just the only, my only advice to anybody is do your best to keep your composure and cool because, I mean, you're pretty much at the mercy of its hands and God's hands at that point. I mean, if I'm almost certain if the things wanted to lunge at you and grab you, they could without hesitation. I mean, when, I mean, I, I really, really start to think about all the missing persons, some of them, not all, that what really happened to, especially hunters from Michigan, Wisconsin, what, what really happened? Did they just vanish or did something or some creature help them vanish? It's something that I don't feel should be overlooked. It's very possible that especially hunters, I know of areas in Michigan that there's a couple places in particular out by the grayling area that a lot of hunters come up missing annually. And it's, there's no sign, no trace of them disappearing whatsoever. They go out to hunt, they never return and not, not a trace of evidence or anything is found. I find that very coincidental. I find that dogman esque, if you will. Um, like I said, if they wanted to, they could snatch a person so fast, it'd probably make somebody's head spin off their shoulders. I mean, they, they have the power, they have the speed, they, they're an apex predator. I mean, I, I've seen one. I mean, that, the, I mean, it's, I mean, it, doesn't take I mean, with the, with any other predator as long as there's food source water and shelter they don't I don't think they need much else and uh, down here in Florida the climate they don't have to worry about cold there's food everywhere with the cows deer all the abundant wildlife in the woods same with Michigan Wisconsin all those areas that they're seen there's there's a primary food source that's usually close to water and it's usually, for some reason, I guess can't say all in the country because there have been some city ones. But uh, and that pretty much entails my encounters, y'all. I mean, that's uh, just be careful out there. I mean, it, it's not a joke. And I mean, these things do exist. And if you're not a believer, um, do your research because there's a lot of people that have come across this and seen it firsthand. I mean, growing up, yeah, you figure, oh, that's just movie stuff, Bigfoot and Dogman. No, these, I mean, there's. A lot of folklore there, but there's also some, uh, I've seen them. So I, I, I mean, nothing will ever change my view on people that say they don't exist. They do exist. I mean, I've, I talked to a couple of people down here that are <clears throat> full blooded, uh, Indians. And, uh, I was talking to them about my encounters in Michigan when, <clears throat> and he, uh, <clears throat> showed me a tattoo on his thigh a dogman type thing and he said skinwalker shapeshifter and proceeded to tell me on how some of the Indians are it's they don't it's not something that uh, they take lightly either they, they're very aware the Indian tribes of what the dogman shapeshifter whatever you will is and it's a very evil spirit to them and it's something that they do not know at all. I mean, I don't know if they, they may worship it in their own little way just to keep peace with it, but the two I talked to said it, it is an evil spirit, and that's usually when you see it, it's something telling you to get away from where you're at or to leave where you're at. That's just what I've been told. Um, I hope I was able to enlighten a few people. Um, this is, um, I appreciate your time, Brenton. Um, and, uh, it just feels good to actually talk about it and get it out because it's besides you, me and Curtis down here, are the only, uh, two that know about our encounter down here. We haven't shared it with many people. Um, maybe one or two besides you. <clears throat> but like I said, the thing that blew our mind was that night we saw the patrol cars and the fish line, not one report, nothing like it never happened. 
So whatever happened that night, I mean, I don't know where that thing went to, where they did with it, but um, guess is as good as mine. I mean, I have my theories and guesses. Some call me crazy, but I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm just bewildered that there was no report. And actually, in a way, I'm not bewildered because I know the government will go above and beyond to cover stuff like that up because if that gets out, that stuff like that's running around, there's going to be widespread panic and people are, it's going to, could lead to chaos. So I guess they do what they have to do, but those things are out there. And uh, this day and age, I don't think it really matters what state or region of the country you live in. I mean, these things tend to move around from place to place place to place in my experiences i know in michigan man it was uh i don't know if it was a herd of them or just one or two of them but i mean they're they're there i mean the neighbors have seen them my father who thought i was crazy will not go in the woods anymore because of it as he he now swears something's out there won't even let he's got a new dog now and he won't even let it near the woodland and fear that'll get snatched but he's uh now he's done his research on that dog man thing. And he told me, is it, I can't believe how many people have seen this and I've never seen it. I said, you don't want to see it. Something that you don't forget. And it's not a pleasant experience, Pops. You know, it's something that will always be with me. And there's a couple of few people I've shared it with. And I'm very careful on who I share it with. You know, don't need that kind of, negativity i know what i saw i know they exist and i'm a believer in it and i just respect the creature and it's wherever it is i'm not there to harm it i'm not gonna throw bullets at it just go about my business and it can go about his and uh it's about all i got tonight brenton 